So after winning the Champions League, my name should be top of the list for any club with a vacancy. But it took Man City four weeks to get back to me for an interview. The interview went well. Next thing I know, they've offered me a contract, which of course we accept. So we have now left Germany, gone to England, and the challenge is to win the Premier League and the FA Cup in England before leaving. And we do have a slight budget to spend. And spend it I did. I've never had this amount of money before in my life. How are you doing? I hope you're well. Welcome to Season 5 of Glory Hunter. We've completed Italy. We've completed Germany. We're now back home in England. Football has come home. We've also got a Champions League trophy in the cabinet as well to go alongside the Bundesliga and the DFB Pokal, Serie A and the Coppa Italia. Premier League and FA Cup is what is on the cards this season. We had a slight rebuild to do with Man City as most of the players left. I'm surprised they sacked Pep Guardiola, but most of the players have gone. £305 million of players going out. With the likes of Jeremy Docker, who was leaving before I got here. We sold Alvarez for £45 million to Newcastle. We sold Oscar Bob and James McAtee to Barcelona for, for a combined £90 million. How we did that, I don't know. Ake's gone to Saudi. Akanji's gone to Saudi as well. We've made a bit of money here. And we spent, wait for it, £650 million on 13 new players. Six of those 13 are for the future and are wonder kids waiting in the background, waiting to get the game time. But our biggest fee was 240 million Benjamin Sesco. We have Haaland and we have Sesco at top. Wow. That just screams danger to me. Hopefully we can bang a lot of goals in with them. We also stiffened up our midfield with Turam coming in from Nice. For 90 million, and what a player he looks like at 26 years old. We stiffen up our defense with Pavovic, who was at um, Tottenham, signed him for 75 million. Busquets is a young kid, bought him from Villarreal for 65 million. He has been playing most of, he's been playing some games, and he's only 18 years old. Scalvini from Atlanta for 60 million. Restez as a backup goalkeeper for 50 million. Nelson Brett is a youngster, bought him from Porto for 30 million. He looks decent, one for the future. Pablo Espinosa as well, one for the future, 19 years old. Bruno Rodriguez, another youngster. Like I said, we were wonder kids shopping with this money. I think I might have made Man City's future squad too good. Sasha Christianman, midfielder, good potential. Alan Tujura, the Argentinian, another defender who's going to be quality in a couple of years' time. Chris Hewitt from Lincoln, an English midfielder who looks decent. Gone back on loan to Lincoln. He's not going to get much game time here this season, so send them back out loan. And the final one on loan from Real Madrid for the season is Hendrik, the Brazilian wonder kid. So up front, I have Haaland, Sesco, Hendrik. Oh, screams fear into that anyone's defense. And we're going to keep. The 4 3 3 Cisco tactic that we used last year for Bayern Munich. If I pick without restrictions, best 11, this is what comes up. It's decent. I think I might have missed the trick with right back and left back. They're doing well so far. So we have Edison and Golf still here. Rico Lewis as a right back. Ruben Diaz and Gardabal as our two centre backs. We have Tomiyasu as our left back. Rodri as our DM. Dram sits in the middle in the centre midfield. Overtakes. Kevin De Bruyne, who is now getting on a bit. On my left, we've got Nico Williams. He's another good attacking player. Bernardo Silva's an inside forward. And up front, it looks like it's Hendrik and Haaland. But Hendrik only just came in. So Sesco has been there. And he's got five goals in four games. And wait till you see the start of the season we have had. It's not the easiest start to the season. Community Shield. We won 2-1 in the Community Shield against Arsenal. Our first game of the season was a 3 all draw against Liverpool. Now, check this Liverpool team out because it's ridiculous. Osserman, Kane, Wurtz, Musiala, Jao Neves, Romelu Lukaku, 
Liverpool have got one hell of a team. And our first game of the season, we drew three of them. Not bad, not bad. We then smashed Tottenham 4 1. Tesco getting two. Beat Chelsea 4 0. Tesco getting two. Drew one all at Old Trafford with Aaron Wharton. We have Adam Wharton as our defensive midfielder because Rodri was out injured. Getting the goal in injury time. And we just beat Brentford 4 0 with a youth team. The competition wise, at the moment, we're currently sitting fifth, undefeated, same as Arsenal, but we're two points behind them. Long way to go yet, though. And our Champions League fixtures has been drawn. Not an easy set of fixtures, let's say that. Real Madrid, Galatasaray, Malmo, Juventus, PSG, RB Leipzig, uh, PAOK, and Copenhagen to finish off with. We're not interested in the Champions League. We're interested in the FA Cup and the Premier League. That's what we've got to focus on this season. We don't enter the FA Cup until the third round, not until January. So, all that said and done. Let's simulate season five and see how we get on with Manchester City in the Premier League. Can we add another two trophies to our trophy cabinet? September, and we kicked off the season with an absolute banger with a two all draw against Real Madrid in the Champions League league phase. Benjamin Sesco's getting the score underway before Ian Haaland made it two. But Real Madrid fought back at the bare bow. Rodrigo getting a goal in the 51st minute and then an equaliser in the 90th minute. In the Premier League, we face Newcastle at St. James's Park. To Ram in the second minute, getting a score and underway. Before a neat 1 2, Coop Miners made it 1 1 just before the half time whistle. Erlen Haaland, of course, got on the score sheet in the 54th minute. And then Adam Wharton in the 63rd minute made it 3 1 and all three points were ours. In the Premier League, we're sitting second, a point behind Everton. October, and we took a trip to the city ground, smashing Nottingham Forest 6-1. Bernardo Silva got the score and underway in the 8th minute, before Rodri made it 2-0 just before the half-time whistle. Second half, Erlen Haaland was hungry, and ended up bagging four goals without response for Nottingham Forest. But in the 80th minute, they got both through Mitrovic. We follow that up with a 5-0 win away against Norwich. Rodri in the 11th minute, making it 1-0. Before Erlen Harden from the penalty spot, making it 2. Rodri again, just before the half-time whistle, made it 3-0. And again, another penalty from Harland made it 4-0. And then Kevin De Bruyne in his last season with us, made it 5-0. And we are currently sitting top of the league, unbeaten, going into November. November, and we had a tough Champions League game against PSG, but we came out with winners 3-2. Hendrik, in the sixth minute, got the score and underway after capitalising on a PSG mistake. Rasmus Hoyland got PSG's equalising in the ninth minute before Rico Lewis, four minutes later, put this in the back of the net. And at half time, we think you're going to win this, but Rasmus Hoyler came up again with an equaliser. In the 51st minute, Nico Williams did that. We smash Mikel Arteta's Arsenal 3 0. Kevin De Bruyne getting the score underway with a great free kick in the 25th minute before Nico Williams in the 62nd minute made it 2. And Phil Foden got on the score sheet as well to make it 3 0. And it looks like it's going to be a two-horse race in this Premier League already as us and Liverpool are level on points on 35. December and the team that rejected us was punished. We beat Aston Villa 6-2. Erlen Haaland in the seventh minute, making it 1-0. Before two minutes later, Bernardo Silva got himself on the score sheet. Erlen Haaland again in the 37th minute, making it 3-0. Before Ollie Watkins making it 3 1 at half time. Hendrik got himself on the score sheet and that's Harland assist. Ollie Watkins pulled another goal back for uh, Aston Villa. But it wasn't enough as Ruben Diaz in the 83rd minute wrapped up the scoring and made it 6 2. We also smashed Burnley 5 0 and Harland got two there as well. And another team in Clarenton Blue, West Ham, 5 2 again. 
In fact, we scored 39 goals, conceding 6 in the whole of December, which puts us top of the league by 3 points heading into January. Definitely a two horse race. January and we started off the month with a 6-0 win over Hull in the FA Cup, progressing into the fourth round. But the biggest tie we had was a 4-0 win over Liverpool in the Premier League. Bernardo Silva got the score underway in the 13th minute. Before that man again, he can't stop scoring. Erna Harden made it 2. Five minutes later, made it 3 with a great finish. And on the error mark to round, round up the scoring with a great finish. But this was our biggest shock of the season, beating our arch rivals Manchester United 10-0 with Erlen Haaland scoring 7 of the 10 goals. We were 5-0 up at half time, so they can't say they had a man sent off. They did though with Ganacho in the 52nd minute, but we just absolutely annihilated them from start to finish. The golf in depth and quality is massive and whoever manager was at Old Trafford then should have been sacked there and then. 10-0, Harlan scoring 7, great day out. Fourth round of the FA Cup and we beat Barnsley means we progress into the fifth round. And we're beating Liverpool in the league, we're still only three points clear at the top of the table. February and we started off well, beating Chelsea 1-0 at Stamford Bridge. Erlen Harden with a penalty in the 88th minute. But that wasn't done in London. We then faced Arsenal in the EFL Cup final, losing 3-2. Arsenal getting the goals early on with Martinelli in the 13th minute. Saliba just before half-time making it 2. Karasaka made the game wrapped up for Arsenal in the 64th minute, but Sesco in the 81st put a bit of pressure on them, but it wasn't enough. Adam Wharton got us a late, late goal, but Arsenal win the EFL Cup. We beat Preston 5-1 in the fifth round of the FA Cup, means we go to the quarters. And in the Premier League, we are now nine points clear of Liverpool with 10 games remaining. March and in the Champions League round of 16, we faced Fenerbahce in the first leg, we went 5-1. But then in the second leg, we won again 5-2. 10-3 on aggregate, meaning we go into the quarterfinals. Talking of quarterfinals in the FA Cup, we beat Brighton 3-2. Nico Williams in the second minute got the scoring underway in this one before an Andre equaliser for Brighton made it 1-1. Erling Haaland from the penalty spot doesn't miss in the 37th minute before Sesco making it 3-1 and Yuri Alberto for Brighton in the 83rd minute give it a bit of a squeaky bum. Back in the Premier League and we beat Brentford 3-0 Haaland getting himself two goals and Hendrik getting on the score sheet before a shock to the system as we lose at home to Everton 3-0. We're still top of the table, nine points clear with seven games remaining. Surely we can't throw this away. In April, and it wasn't going to be easy. We lose our first game 1-0 to Arsenal. A Xavi Simmons goal right on the hour mark was enough for Arsenal to win it. Before we face my old side, FC Bayern, in the quarterfinals of the Champions League, losing 1-0. But in the second leg, it didn't matter. Winning 3-1, 3-2 on aggregate. Sesco getting the score in the second half underway in the 53rd minute before at least a penalty, making it 1-1. Haaland, he likes to be on a score sheet, this man. And then Sesco in the 71st minute, making it all sure we went through. And our run in the FA Cup is over, losing to Liverpool in the FA Cup semi-final 3-2. Darwin Nunez getting the score underway in the 20th minute before Rodri in the 41st minute made it 1-1. But two quick fire goals from Liverpool from Florian Wirtz and Canate made it 3-1 at half time to Liverpool. We didn't fight it, put any comeback in, apart from the penny at Cisco at the end. But then a massive shock. We lost the first leg of the Champions League semi-finals, losing 2-0 to Galatasaray. It was just a blip. Second leg winning 7-1 means we progress to a Champions League final. 
Foden got a score underway in the 29th minute before Sesco made it 2 0. Gareth Hathaway got a goal back in the 44th minute before the second half performance of a lifetime from the squad. Bernardo Silva in the 46th minute, Rodri in the 54th minute, Silva again in the 57th minute, and Rodri in the 75th minute, making sure we go through 7 3 on aggregate to another Champions League final. But the pressure was really on now. Win against Brighton, and we are champions of the Premier League. And we nearly got off to a perfect start with a free kick that hit the post. But it falls back to Wharton, who makes it 1 0. Against Brighton, we're passing the ball around lovely. And Javiri gets in and makes it 2 0. That's his fourth goal of the season. Uh, second half, and Wharton with a free kick whips it in back post, and Gavini making it 3 0. And of course, about a whole season with him surely he doesn't miss many goals Haaland with a 64th goal of the season and his striking partner Sesco from distance top corner making us win 5-0 and we have become the Premier League champions which means that's another trophy ticked off our list that is six trophies in five seasons that we have won but Manchester City are your champions of the English Premier League yet again. What a great season we have had. Oh, and we got in the Champions League final. Yeah, this happened. Beating Barcelona on penalties, which means we have won back-to-back -back Champions Leagues as a manager. What a season back was. We've added the Premier League trophy to the cabinet. Hey, we didn't get the FA Cup losing in the semi-final to Liverpool, but we also won the Champions League as well, so we can't be too disheartened. Premier League is one of the hardest ones to win. Same as the FA Cup, because it's a knockout competition, there's no second leg, there's one game, that's it. In the Carabao Cup, we lost in the final to Arsenal 3-2. It's not part of the challenge, but Nevertheless, it's still a final. Knocked out in the semi-finals to Liverpool 3-2. Who then go on to beat Newcastle 2-1 in extra time. So they're the holders of the FA Cup. So we're staying at Man City next season to get that FA Cup. We've got to get it early. Premier League, we win it by five points in the end with a goal difference of 100. And Erling Haaland has scored 50 Premier League goals. 5-0. Premier League goals. No one else is anywhere near him. Haaland has had an absolute worldie of his season. But I think the biggest shock of the season was smashing Manchester United 10-0. With Haaland getting seven goals, but not picking up man a match. <laughs> it's one of the weirdest ones ever. Busquets gets man a match he has three assists. Goals-wise, as you can imagine, Haaland walked away with it. 64 goals in 46 starts. Unbelievable. The man just couldn't miss. I think he got a bit tired at the end because he got rested sign up. So he's a bit tired. Cesco had a good first season. 38 goals in 37 games. Hendrik on loan from Real Madrid with 20 in 38. But now the silver surprise me, 16 goals. 49, Rodri had 15 from central midfield. Duram had a good season, 12 goals, 15 assists. Nico Williams with 10. Bill Foden with 10. Adam Waterman with 9. Assist rise, 24 assists from our right back, Rico Lewis, who is unhappy. Wants a new deal. Before we give him a new deal. Kevin De Bruyne got 20 assists as well, and he's going to be missed at the age of 36. He's now retiring. Big chunk of wage gone as well, which is good. Bernardo still with a 19 assist, Foden with 18. Bruce gets to sign in in the summer. What a season he has had. Leading Premier League player, valued at nearly 200 million. He's had a good first season. Good first season. Still not quite sure what his position is, but whatever it is, it's good. Dram getting 15 assists, Ethan Williams getting 11. All in all, it's been a great great season so we are going to stay here at Man City for next season because we've got to win that FA Cup 
This team does need a bit of strengthening in right back and left back, uh, even though Busquets is. I say Busquets more as a winger than a defender. But that's season five done. Our budget is 220 million, but we'll minus wage with Emma, but then Kevin De Bruyne's retiring and he takes that wage anyway. So, and a couple of goings, a couple coming in. Next season's going to be difficult to win the FA Cup because it is knockout football, it's one game. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more of my FM24 content. I'll see you all very soon for season six, where we try and add the FA Cup to the trophy cup. Until next time, guys, take a say, look after yourself, and I will see you all very, very soon. Doodles.